Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, finally to Victoria Free. A game I personally did not think I was going to pick up. Because there's there's no there's no armies that there's, there's no there's, you know let's not harp on that it's it's an old lead old tread problem that a lot of people have spoken about over the time but having seen next to nothing of the game since I decided to swear off it for a while I decided to pick it up and put some hours into it of which I've not done yet as I've been at work so we're gonna be playing this fresh out of the boat I have. Uh, yeah, there is no games there, but I have indeed uh, played a game, and by that I mean I played about 20 minutes, and then I deleted it because it, it was poor. Now, there are objectives now, which is something I found out, which is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I had a look at them. Um, I did just did a random sandbox game just to kind of, you know, look at the game. Uh, but we're going to be playing Learn the Basics, all in the game. And the reason we're doing this is because I know Nothing. Nothing. I have looked so little into this game that probably some people picking it up just by looking at it have probably seen more than me, which it's, it's pretty funny. Now, I intend to do a learn the game, and then I intend to do a proper campaign, um, maybe one of these as a um, as a nation that I've never actually played in um, Victoria 2, even in my own time. But for now... I think we're going to take the country of Sweden for a run. Um, we'll do an Iron Man mode. Uh, I, I, I don't really care if we lose or anything like that. So as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be a little bit of fun. But yeah, so we're going to play a campaign guided by challenges that help you learn both how the game works and how to play it. Something I think I'm actually quite interested in. Now again, for those of you at home who are interested in me playing a harder nation or wanting me to do something more out there, if this campaign does well in terms of how I enjoy it, and also if you guys are quite receptive, I will be very interested in continue playing it, of course. Um, but again, as much as I'm, ha I'm happy if you guys are really interested in it, I still need my own interest to give me that cause to play. So now, like I said, let's get into this. We're going to be playing a Sweden. Now, I do apologize. I'm just going to quickly add one addendum. I apologize that I'm playing a Sweden. I just have no interest in playing the Belgium because I've played Belgium so much in Vic 2. And on Chile and Cape Colony, just... No, not interested. But so I apologize we're playing Sweden on the heels of our um, Scandinavia game in the U4. But if anything, it's a nice little uh, head tilt to it. As this game shouldn't be too long and... Maybe even partially through this game, I will start a second campaign alongside it. We will see. But anyway, Sweden. After losing Finland and gaining Norway in a personal union, Sweden has begun the slow process of industrialization, while also becoming more liberal in some ways. What does the future of Sweden hold? I don't know, but let's figure it out. Sweden. Learning. Oh yeah, let's get a capital S as well. I mean, there we go. Start Iron Man. Okay, so I'm just going to move this to the side. We've got, I must admit, a very beautiful map. I do like the little, like the additions and the um the very much just the general looking of the con of the game and the countries and the fact that it's very much it very much feels like I'm looking at a map from the perspective of my you know my royal chambers or you know war council and such like that. The fact that, it, like, and then when you look, zoom in, like, really far, you see this beautiful landscape. Like, it's something that stand out to me. And if there was, um, and if they did, like, EU5 on this engine, just from the bare glimpses I've looked at it, I definitely don't think we'd dis be disappointed in terms of, like, the actual good looks of the, uh, like, the immediate good looks of the game. Like, and how beautiful it looks. Now, I, obviously, it'd be a little bit more of a pain for a game like Europa. But I think that even Crusader Kings 3 is one of the most beautiful looking games Paradox has pr produced. I think that it could do really well. Now, let us read the Welcome to the Age of Progress, all the little thing. The year is 1836. Karl Johan bon uh, Bonadotte is the king of Sweden. The Industrial Revolution is well underway, bringing cataclysmic social change along with it. More than 20 years have passed since the Congress of Vienna imposed some semblance of order upon Europe, and unrest is once again starting to brew among the great powers. It will be up to you to guide Sweden to glory over the following, fellow sen following century. Sorry, There is no one way to win in Victoria Free. Set your own goals and experience different stories in the process of pursuing them. 
So I think that's actually... I do actually think, uh, just off the top of the bat again, and again, this part, if those of you guys are really interested in me to get into the meat of it, I'm going to just... Uh, this, this is definitely going to be me talking a lot more than just getting straight into the meat of it, like I said. Um... So what I was going to add to this, uh, I was going to say is, I like the fact that there's this whole idea of, you know, you can play a sandbox game, but there's also types of objectives that give you, like, little stories. Now, again, I haven't experienced any of them, so I cannot say if they are well executed. But the actual idea of implementing some sort of, um, not restrictions, but like a general path that could be a little bit, maybe a little bit more customized down the future. Maybe every country will get their own version of, like, the economic hegemony path, so on and so forth. It's a very interesting um, idea. Um, so let's see what the next lesson is. So core gameplay. Victoria 3 is about taking charge of growing and shaping a Victorian era country with a primary focus on economics and politics. You will be constructing a society of your own imagination while overcoming internal and external obstacles. Politics, economics, diplomacy and war are all tools to that end but must be employed with care as your population have needs and desires of their own. Your decisions will impact them and they will in turn attempt to influence you. Victoria 3 is a dynamic simulation with many moving parts. All of your actions will have consequences and even unintended ones. This is normal and expected. You do not have to learn how everything works before you play. Take it slow and learn from your mistakes and you will soon be an expert policymaker. So, you know, move the keys. Oh, ta oh that's nice, an instant overview. There we go. That's actually really nice. Um, yeah, can move my screen. Um, I know because we've got the, we've got we've got the zoom in, which is uh, great. Uh, we don't want to zoom in too quickly because the game will have a little bit of a freak out. Okay. Sometimes you will see underlined text or a colored name or concept. How hover your over console over this to get information in a new window called a tooltip. They were in CK3. Very interesting things. Keep your cursor still for a moment of the tooltip and get a solid board it and lock it in place. You can then find a new underlined text concept and hover over that tooltip. To continue, hover over it. Yeah, very simple. So, cap uh, capacities. So this is why I want to do this, because I had no clue what these were. Like, when I was messing about in the uh, game, I did n none of that made... Like, I did. I had none of a clue what this is, so it's probably a good idea for me to look into it. So these capa free capacities measure different aspects of your country's power. Mouse over the orange text to get more information. Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is a capacity used to maintain your country's administrative cohesion and day-to-day -day operations. The cost increases with the population across your incorporated states and with every institution investment level, and is also used to administer commanders and trade routes. You gain bureaucracy from operating government administration buildings. We then have authority. Authority is a capacity used to di uh, to effect internal change in your to your country, like in issuing decrees or managing interest groups. You gain authority from laws. So we'll, have, we'll obviously, I'm not going to go in too deep into each of these yet. We'll try and do that as we play. Influence is a capacity used for diplomatic action and packs targeting another country. Capacities originate from some government building, certain laws, and your rank respectively. You get to decide how to allocate them to further your interest. Unspent capacity will provide a minor boost to one aspect of your country, while overspending will incur a major penalty. Okay, so money in the treasury is found, uh, is used to fund the state apparatus. Uh, so we've got so we've got money going into expanding the state apparatus, pay the military, influence minor nations, and expand industry and infrastructure. The vast majority of money in your country is circulated by buildings and pops and is outside of your direct control. However, building uns and pops can be taxed to grow and improve your economy, decrease your expenses by minimizing operation co operating costs of government buildings. The balance shown in the tooltip bar reflects a weekly change. Unlike capacities, money can be saved to be spent later. The going into debt by running a negative weekly balance can often yield a better return on investment. Loans will be automatically repaid while your weekly balance is positive. Info panels. On the left side of the screen uh, is a number of buttons that can take you to screens showing an overview of the different aspects of Sweden. Some are used to manage your country while others are informational. Feel free to look through them and press next. Okay, so we've got politics, which... Uh, seems pretty straightforward. It's like the government bo governing body. And if you keep pressing this, it'll actually tick trick through them. That's really nice. Uh, so we can see how much we're losing of um, bureaucracy to our state. Uh, so we could obviously do some investing uh, and, you know, a changing of this. Uh, we've got our laws. And I think this is, yeah, whether or not laws can be changed. Um, like, obviously, we we, we want to be, um, where's the, uh, man, there doesn't, uh, okay, we don't seem to have, wait. 
oligarchy. Um, no, that doesn't help. National supremacy. Okay, yeah. So we can look at our laws and that here. So we've got a budget, which I think this is the only one that makes mo uh, any sense to me. Budget. Completely and utterly understandable. Um, we've also got, like, obviously, uh, very high taxes, very low taxes. You know, we've got the tax in there. And then we've got the... Um, um, the construction goods, some government wages and military wages. We will, of course, be maxing out military wages as soon as we are able. Um, yeah. Can't do that just yet because that would legitimately bankrupt. Uh, not bankrupt us, but it would very much close to do so. We've got the buildings. Now, buildings are the new mechanic I don't understand. I'm sorry. We, we can build a big bet. Whose idea was to let me build a big bet? Okay, we're just going to ignore that. So we've got skyscrapers, the Statue of Liberty, the some other buildings that I don't understand why they're there. And then also, like, expanding and stuff, it looks like, for other buildings already in our economy. We've then got... Okay, so that's in urban. We've then got some rural buildings. And I'm assuming if we clicked one of these, it would actually produce said building. Um, okay, so obviously, I don't want to um, do that just yet. Uh, we've got the development. I'm assuming this is um, for... It, it looks like it's for my military and infrastructure. And then you've got construction, which... I'm assuming construction sector helps indicate your actual construction speeds. Uh, we've then got the market, which I believe a lot of people said this is quite... Um, so I did do some foreign reading, I will be honest. Um, I did see quite a lot of people say the economy seems to be quite bare bones at the moment. Though, how true that is, I don't know. And I'm not going to comment on without actual proof or understanding of it. And then the military screen, a screen that I hope to spend loads of time on in this game. Um, I do not understand it yet, and I am very much eager to learn. Uh, but it looks to be where we control and conscript and mobilize and generally deal with our military as a military in general. Uh, we then have diplomacy, which uh, shows anything releasable. Uh, we can declare our interests, which I believe are like declaring. Um, yeah, we can declare interest in the strategic region, region uh, which is essentially like uh, saying what I want. You know, um, we're not going to worry about that just yet. Uh, we've then got technology, te technology, self-explanatory cultures. I feel like that one's self-explanatory too. Uh, population, obviously, where we could look deeper into the political, uh, pol uh, see the t t deeper into our pops and see exactly how they um, align themselves politically, pop uh, um, religiously, and other such um, manners. We've then got journal, which is essentially our way of doing. Is it? It's our events and decisions. That's that's all it is. Uh, and then we've got Outliner, which is, uh, I think that affects up here, so. And then, last but not least, the map list. So, oh, we've got a nice, very convenient uh, way to look at Pops. Uh, watch this. Standard of living. So, Lubeck has the best standard of living. Uh, which is, sorry, best average standard of living, which is interesting. We are... Uh, we're not on the list, unfortunately. That's uh, we're, we're just, just, to be fair, we are very close to being on the list, so that's okay. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, keep going. So, next. Along the bottom of the screen are five lenses. These lenses provide a easy access to actions you take you can take to shape your country combined with information needed to make good decisions. Production is for expanding industries to produce goods and provides details about your economic output. Politics is for managing government and your population and provides details about the power balance of your country. Diplomacy is for initiating or breaking pacts with other countries or starting diplomatic plays against them. It provides you details about that. Military is for expanding your army and navy and recruiting commanders and provides details about wartime matters. And trade lets you expand infrastructure and establish trade routes given and gives you information on markets. So... Each mode has learned this is my mo uh, map mode. Zoom in and out to take a look at the map, see what details just change. Click on each lens and looking at maps can give you a good hunch of what's currently going on in your country. So we've got uh, unemployed 40,000 here, unemployed 20,000 here. We've got unemployed 16 over there. And that's my um, Google home going on in the background, have a little bit of thing. Uh, we've got quite a large unpopulation here. We've got one single unpopulated there. That's beautiful um okay because that's not ours though so it, yeah that uh it's not of great interest i don't i don't i kind of wish i didn't see uh everyone else's anyway let's go to here so what's this uh church of sweden this is clout i don't understand what clout is so let's have a look at clout uh clout is so an interest group share total political strength that pops across their country generate 
Clouds, the final word, how influential a group is, uh, and affects anything from legitimacy and an act of law if the interest group is, is in government, to political movement and support, and radicalism if it is in opposition. Okay, fair enough. That makes sense. Um, so again, these are... So the, these are different ones. We've got the diplomatic lens. Um... Yeah, I don't want to be touching colonies personally. Um, next, military. So we've got barracks, uh, profit, impact. Don't know if any of those are good yet. Naval bases, and then last but not least, um, yeah, new construction sectors. What's that? Okay, so this would absolutely de just degrade our profit, and ports. Again, massive uh, upheaval in profits. So let's uh, keep pressing next. Uh, adjust the speed of your game and pause and unpause at the highlighted speed controllers. You can also pause and unpause by hitting space on your keyboard. The timeline of Victoria 3 spans 100 years from 1836 to 1936, but you can adjust the tempo yourself. Right now, the time is standing still because the game is paused. While well, the game is paused, you can still interact with it, but many aspects... Trans actions transpire over time and require the clock to run at, to have any effect. For this part of the tutorial, we'll keep the game paused while we talk you through some fundamentals. Take note of the highlight speed controls and we'll soon... Okay, so just play. You have just begun your first tutorial challenge. We have paused the game to give you time to read. Remember to unpause using the speed controls. Open the journal. Okay, let's have a look at the journal. Um, expand a basic building. On your way to growing your economy is by constructing or expanding buildings. You, can all, you cannot always know ahead of time if certain building would be profitable or not, but by expanding a basic agricultural building, such as livestock ranches, is relative slate, it's a relatively safe investment. Uh, you've been tasked with buildings, okay. You can I ever... Okay, let's understand. I understand. Um, tell me how. Well, no, I actually kind of knew how to do it. Um, builds and estates by clicking a state on the map, you can see which building exists there. Find a state called Gotland and expand the building. Okay. So it's essentially just telling me to click there. Okay. Um, so now we need to run the time a little bit. So yeah, I do apologize. It's going to be quite a, quite a slow... Um, yeah, it's going to be quite a slow... You know, first session and uh, generally just a first campaign, uh, per first playthrough. I will be investing myself in a Prussia game at some point, maybe a Great Britain. Probably going to stay clear of Russia for quite a while, given current events in the world. Don't really want to uh, have anything to do with that. So we've got 13 more weeks there. We're going on free speed. Free speed is perfectly fine with me. Um, expensive goods. So tools, iron, and wood are currently expensive. So. What I remember um, reading is, if something's expensive, build it. So, we're currently, uh, we currently, like, iron is currently expensive, as per... Okay, let's just uh, get a few. Uh, so, wood, you know, wood's probably more... Wood, wood's probably more accessible to us. So, we're going to build... Um, is it develop? No, where, whereabouts would it be? It's not going to be urban, obviously. Rural... Uh, logging camp. So, got 16 of them, apparently. So, let's do you. Uh, we'll expand you and you. Now, the reason we're going to do that is, if, like, again, I'm, I'm going off a hunch here. If this good is, if good is, if this good's worth a lot, why not invest our economy into it for a while? Uh, and we'll see what happens. But we'll queue everything up. And uh, we've got total weeks, just over a year left of development. Um, I'd love to expand our economic center, uh, our construction center. But for now, not much we can do about it. So it looks like we are supply network. I don't know what that is yet, but let's um, focus on uh, this for now. got some missions here that I'm going to just kind of ignore for now because again the mission our current um, current mission is not to win it's to just kind of not die 
Well, I think, obviously, we shouldn't be dying. Yeah, we currently have a GDP of, I'm assuming, very little. Not as little as uh, the, the Spanish, though. Like, in comparison to what they, they should be doing. Okay, so we've got... How much longer we got? Six more weeks. Beautiful. Looking forward to it being done. So what I can tell, just from the immediate um, thing, construction sector are very important. We expand this, it will essentially give us the quicker build speed. That's what I'm seeing, though unfortunately it's, it's a little bit rich for our blood right now. Uh, France and the Spanish declared a rivalry. England, can we be friends? Uh, open diplomacy. Apparently, I cannot uh, diplomatic. I cannot diplomacy them. It's uh, rather unfortuitous. Okay, so we've got 16 weeks on our first logging camp. Hopefully, we, our uh, economy isn't going to suffer too much. Now we do have a decent cash reserve, but of course, more money is better. Okay, let's. Uh, we so we built a basic building. The expansion of the livestock ranch in Gotland, you ordered some time ago, is now complete. The building can now support a larger workforce and produce go more goods. You can also, you also will no longer have to pay weekly material costs for the goods required in its expansion. The rate by which you can order the expansion of buildings across Sweden is limited by your construction sector, which can be expanded in exactly the same way as industries. Having construction sector buildings in the same state of the building under construction will increase construction efficiency. Okay. Um... Change production method. So, Rye Farms in Svealand is a building whose earnings could be potentially improved by changing a production method. For the purposes of the lesson, it is recommended that you change a relatively safe production method, such as the fruit or liquor production on a farm, or use the tools on a ranch. So, tell me how. So, production methods can be changed from the building details panel. We'll continue Rye Farms in Svealand, which is... Yeah, uh, buildings... Okay, and you. There are these are production methods currently in effect. Building you can stick by. Uh, you can click any of them to list alternative options. The green number indicates number of alternatives right now. So currently we're using potatoes. Um. So we'll change that to apple orchard. Good job. You can see how the effects on the building immediately, but repercussions of the workforce across the economy might take some time to materialize. Keep the production active for at least four weeks to complete the lesson. Okay, so I don't know if I did a good thing, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so this is the most number. Oh, there's even production values for everything. Oh, I've got one. I've got like a. I've got a really good. Uh, I got some really good stuff. What's this? Number f f 23 trade section of the world. Yeah, boys. Um. How is this construct? How is this? Uh, number 17 logging camps in the world. So you are worth it. Uh, so we've got some stuff going on. I'm just going to kind of ignore all this stuff going on down here. It doesn't affect me right now. Uh, right now, nothing is that too effective for me. We still got uh, good old King William of Hanover over here. It is interesting you can click on the rulers of this. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't really care about that. Not yet, anyway. All we have to do now is expand this. Tell me why. So, production methods determine the change of buildings. Open up. Okay, so. Okay, let's just uh, let's get that lesson for now. Okay. The Rye Farms in Scania is a highly productive building that is bringing in a large amount of revenue compared to its expenses, making it an ideal candidate for expansion. Expand this building in order to grow our gross domestic product and base tax. So, where's this? Uh, in where? Scania. Our uh, rye farm, is that here? Okay, so we're actually going to have to um, put that to the front because obviously the mission uh, requires it. Now, like I said, I do apologize, guys, that we're doing this. Um, we're essentially just doing a uh, tutorial, but 
I don't have the spare time at the moment to do this tutorial on my own, and I'm, I kind of like the idea of you guys uh, being able to give me any information. Um, because this campaign is going to go up a lot slower than everything else. Um, not because I don't want it to uh, go f up faster, but because I am currently working a lot for the next few weeks. And as such, uh, that's going to give me um, ample time to get this um, given to you guys at a lower, way uh, lower thing. Yeah, I have no interest in doing those for now. Uh, decisions. Nothing there. Uh, the Great Hunger Urbanized Sweden. It's got, it's got some things down there to do. I think my one goal for this campaign is to get is to get this is to get um, the Grand Duchy of Finland back into mine. And sure, kill Denmark. Why not? So let's uh, go up to four speed just for now, and we'll uh, get this rye farm sorted out a little bit quicker. We don't really want to spend any of our other things, like, because we don't actually have lots of these. We just have a balance, which is. I don't know. It doesn't seem worth it just yet. Especially not when we don't know exactly. Especially when I don't know more accurately. You guys probably do, but I don't know what stuff's being. Like, cost was. Like, stuff will cost what. Um, like, if I put this up. You know, landowners' political strength will go up, but minus six per state penalties from turmoil. I mean, I guess less turmoil is always great, but like, what will it cost? It doesn't say what it will cost to me to do this. I'm assuming it'll cost a lot of a, a lot of stuff. Uh, so landowners are the only people we really care about. That's uh, obvious. Um, I feel like we should care about the military, who are currently 19% clout with the. Uh, Orlando is only having 11%. Like, move over. Get the armed forces in here. Okay, there we go. Our building was complete. So we've now got an issue of road maintenance decree. So market access and skin has dropped below 100%, causing adverse price create conditions. Improve this by issuing road maintenance decree in Scania. Tell me why. Market access represents how well connected your states are to their market. With 100% market access, the state will create 10 sell orders for every 10 goods. And 10 buy orders for every 10 goods consumed. Or produced and then, sorry, consumed. At 50% market access, the amount of production consumption will create only 5 buy sell orders on the market. This impacts market price and drags your economy down. Specializing your states and while keeping them well connected is key to running a prosperous nation. Open the market panels for detailed stuff at the Swedish market. Sell orders to buy orders determine a standard price used across your market, but with less than 100% market access, states won't be able to fully utilize the market. Some locally produced goods might drop in price, while goods demand cannot be met locally will increase in price relative to the market price. Local goods, uh, local price conditions can favor pops over other, some pops over others. In a state of high grain production but poor market access, grain will sell for a lower price in the, than the market price. While this might make the pop needs of lower strata easier to meet, it will also limit the wages that grain producing buildings can pay out. In the long term, states with poor market access will fall behind financially. Decrees can be issued to impose an effect on a state at the expense of authority. The effect will remain for only as long as the decree remains. So you need to choose carefully which decrees to use where, since authority is, limited, is a limited resource. Solving an infrastructure shortage more prominent, permanently requires other approaches which you will learn about later. I understand. So let's do some road maintenance down here. Let's keep going. There we go. For 12, so we've got to have this here for 12 weeks. Right. Uh, so while we're doing that, um, Germ British North Germany Interest Act. All right, England. You're going... Uh... Oh. Ah. I'm assuming it's because Hanover is no longer a um, an English property as her queen, the, the queen... Um, Victoria has ascended. Interesting. So she is just a rural and she's, uh, she's got a decent map popularity and she's only 17 years old, poor girl. Already on the throne. Of course, if we've only got three, it's 10 pounds of interest and... We go to the market, sell orders. Yeah, I don't really know how to manage that just yet, but we'll figure it out. Uh, okay, so we've got a second mission. What's this one? So, fix unproductive buildings. 
The almond industries in Scania is not bringing in sufficient revenue compared to its expenses to stay competitive. Use of what you have learned about building production methods to try and resolve this problem. You can also solve the problem with subsidies or trade uh, routes. So Arm Industries has maintained productivity of at least five or be subsidized for four weeks. So let's go to buildings here. The arms industry is currently making 4.2. It's losing us some money. Um, what we could do is we could be essentially prioritize small arms production. We'd deploy, we'd decrease employment. Yeah, because we can't currently do anything else. Uh, I'm assuming they want me to do this. Hmm. Let's have a look and see how that works. No, no. Cannons is better. Cannons is way better. I don't intend to subsidize this building. Okay, let's uh, go to five speed for a minute. So apparently, okay, that's a bit jank. Apparently turning it on and off fixes it. The productivity of the arms industry scanner has recovered, paving the way for either increased wages, dividends, or both. Of course, you could always capitalize on the increased increases by raising taxes instead before the workforce gets their use to the financial improvements. By clicking on your building's productivity from time to time to make adjustments, you can ensure you have a good mix of buildings and that you, uh, good mix of builds and you're not missing out on opportunities. I understand. But unfortunately, guys, as much as I understand, we're actually going to have to end the first part of Victoria Free here. I hope you guys really did enjoy. I do apologize, like I said, again, that we're playing on a tutorial, but it it just needs to be done because this game is very big in comparison. It's very different uh, from what I normally play in terms of, like, it has a lot more to it. So we're going to be uh, taking that in its stride and learning as best we can. Now, I hope you guys have a great day. Please do stay safe. Uh, but if you did enjoy, follow me on YouTube, leave a like, a comment, and a share if you don't mind. But most importantly, guys, have a great day, like I said. Don't know why I'm repeating myself. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys then.